This is Albury Park Mansion in Surrey. Four years ago, Nigel and Jennifer Wally bought Albury, but have since amassed debts of four million pounds. Now the bank wants its money back. Can businesswoman Ruth Watson rescue this historic house from repossession? What the hell were you doing buying it? Champagne and lovely women that way. The bank doesn't care. If I was in Nigel's shoes, I would be shitting myself. You're so laid back, yeah. and I don't know why you think it's all gonna be all right. Mansion is a Grade 2 listed country house in the Surrey Hills. When Nigel Wally and his second wife Jennifer bought Albury four years ago, it seemed like a dream come true. As a retirement home containing 33 apartments owned by elderly residents, Albury allowed Nigel to carry on his life's work as a carer and keep an apartment in grand surroundings. But he soon discovered the business plan was flawed as many of the retirees moved on or died and he was unable to resell the empty flats. It quickly became obvious and there was no way that we could make enough money to really keep the house going. As apartments become free, the Wallies are obliged to buy them back. So far they've been forced to borrow four million pounds for 16 of them. When Nigel lost his son, he took his eye off the ball financially. Losing Jonathan, his only child, um, is something that can never be overcome. Now, at £700,000 a year, running costs at Albury are spiralling out of control. The gas bill alone each year is 60,000 now. So you get about 40,000, 50,000 a month without even blinking. In desperation, the Wallies are getting out of the retirement business to sell their apartments to younger buyers. But the flats are tiny and ill-equipped, and so far they haven't sold any. We have a time scale with the bank now, really, of a review in about six months' time. But unless we've started to sell a few within that period, then it is going to be a real problem. The Wallies have asked Ruth Watson to help prevent them from losing everything. The British Country House is an institution that's under a very real threat. I'm determined to bring my business expertise to bear to help save these historic houses and estates, make them pay their way and preserve them for the future. Self-made businesswoman Ruth owns a hotel and restaurant empire in Suffolk. She's turned around the fortunes of numerous crumbling stately homes, including Hintlesham Hall, which she bought for £400,000 and sold, six years later, for £9 million. Ruth's quest is to save these houses for the nation. Today, she's on her way to rescue Albury. We are praying that she'll be able to do that for Albury, because really, I think without her, we may not survive now. To Albury. Hello, you're Jennifer. Yes. Hello, Nigel. Hello. Nigel. Hello. 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 Nice to Very see good you. to see you. Come inside. It's chilly, isn't it? Ruth starts with an exploratory tour of the stately rooms. This is magical, and you will be breathless. Oh my word! The great room. It is great, isn't it? Absolutely amazing. This room and the drawing room next door are owned by the Wallies, but used as common areas for the elderly residents and they have historic significance. It was used in 1762 for the coronation ball for George III. When we had our own ball here, and we were all dancing in the footsteps of a king. That was really lovely. It's very romantic. Mm -hmm. It makes me instantly nervous, though. <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer's passion is sharing Albury to help those in need. You do charitable events, don't you? Well, we do, yes, and you're looking askance at it. Yeah, just, <laughs> just a tad, wondering whether you can afford to be this charitable. Well, no, when we started, and when we came here, we wanted to make sure that the house, which had always been associated with the village, Albury Park, with Albury Village, was available to the local people and to Surrey itself. I get very nervous about charitable balls because my experience of this is that whenever the people arranging it, they've spent 
all the budget and they leave you with five pounds per head to do the rest of it and yes. then you end up with yes we, we do have to watch that very we do carefully have to watch it. but it's a great reward to do it mm. i mean obviously we're not looking to make money out of the charitable ones uh, and we limit I would. in the center of the house next to the great rooms sits the slightly less than grand dining room the retirees pay a service charge in return for all meals and are catered for by 18 staff. Perfect gentleman as always. Very gentlemanly, I'm impressed. Is there a buffet every evening? Yes, That's there it. is. Now, in my experience, buffets are one of the biggest loss-making things you can do. I don't know how many people ate tonight, but yeah. it can't be more than about 10, and there was enough food there to feed, to feed about... 20? Mm. 20 young rugby players, I would say, right. not yeah. 20 old people with yes. tiny bird-like appetites. Yes. I mean, what are you going to do with that food? Well, staff, we have some I knew you'd say that. Mm. It's just madness. I look at it and I just think, first thing, OK, you're going to tell me the staff are going to get it. You're feeding them far too well, if that's yeah. the case. Mm. So do you know what your staff costs are? I do, yes, yeah. Couldn't you tell me? Um, it's about £25,000 a month. A month? Mm. A month? So 300,000 or so a year, it's a heck of a lot. What is your turnover? About 650,000. So, I mean, you're knocking on for nearly 50%. Mm. That is so, so way out of kilter. You know, you might have to make some redundancies. As a solution to their failing retirement business, the Wallies have started to renovate the flats they bought back in a frantic bid to sell them to a younger market. Ruth thinks she may know why they're not shifting. Just pretend I'm a 30-something couple and I think um, I want to commute into either Guildford or London. Heard about this place, looks fabulous. I drive up the drive, I'm singularly impressed with it all. And then I come in here and I go, oh, fuck, you know, what have I come into? Because this is like some geriatric department. I mean, you just look at this whole room. What the hell were you doing buying it in the first place with all this encumbrance? I mean, I just don't get it. I would have run a mile. Obviously, we have got a core <coughs> of these retirees who are still with us, and there's no way we can abandon them. All the public rooms, everything that has something you can sell in a commercial way should be part and parcel of that yes. commerce, you know, mm. and you can't have it being sullied by some dear old dear sitting down and supping on a bowl of soup at six o'clock in the evening. Mm. You know, it just doesn't work. Nigel and Jennifer are desperate to save their home. But is this mammoth house simply too much for them? You have dealt with the last four years with incredible incompetence. I still feel as if I'm not certain who you think is going to live here. Four years ago, Nigel and Jennifer Wally bought Aubrey Park Mansion near Guildford in Surrey. Aubrey was first mentioned in the Doomsday Book. In 1819, architect Augustus Pugin famed for his work on the Houses of Parliament, embellished Albury with 63 individually designed Gothic revivalist chimneys. Inside, the Great Room hosted George III's Coronation Hall. Next door, the light-filled drawing room was designed by Sir John Soane, while his first known cantilevered staircase dominates the hall. But the current owners have run up four million in debt and can't sell their apartments. Ruth Watson is trying to rescue Albury. Albury may be in a prime location, but its vast size makes it completely unsuitable for modern family living. Its hope and future lies in a sensitive division into apartments. Despite facing homelessness, Nigel seems relaxed about the bank's six-month deadline. Well, yes, they put fairly stringent controls on how much we spend on a monthly basis. Uh, they want to have monthly meetings for the next few months. If we start selling apartments and the loan comes down, which hopefully we will, um, then that won't be a, be a problem. And if we don't, then you know, the whole thing will go into the melting pot. But since deciding to get out of the retirement business, the Wallies haven't sold any flats. Many of the apartments are woefully inadequate for attracting a wealthier market. Ruth wants to see the extent of the problem. 
Well, this is the sitting room, come kitchen, kitchenette, really, which rather illustrates the point uh, of the halfway house that we're at, as much as it was originally designed when we were looking at the retirees. We're going to eat all our meals downstairs, basically, and just wanted basic items. Have you got a show flat where actually everything is done to the standard that you would love it to be done? It's furnished, it's kitted out, it's something that somebody can instantly see and say, yep, that's for me. Well, no, we haven't, and now we're looking at a different market. We've got to look at the different ways, what we need to put in here, so mm. suggestions are welcome, really. Ruth's unimpressed by Nigel's casual approach. I'm not convinced that Nigel understands about property development. There's too many apartments lying empty, too many that aren't the right size. Above all, he doesn't know who the customers are going to be. He hasn't profiled them. He hasn't made a grand plan for the building. This is not one of his strengths. Thank you, thank you. Without Bye a show flat... I'll take you into apartment 35 great. first. Great, OK. The Wallies Super. are presenting unrenovated apartments Hello. Hello, to sought after new blood. This is um, uh, obviously a lower pump. This is one okay. of the pantries or the laundry or something like this. We have yes. a bathroom there and yeah. a sort of dressing area there. Then we have a second bedroom through here. Right. This will be made into a much larger darling. kitchen area. Yes. Well, I've got the apartment out there, darling. Nigel is normally chief salesman and is unhappy with the apartment Jennifer is showing Mr Nixon. An amazing ability to do everything wrong. But the Muse apartment Nigel wants him to see is let and set up for retirees. And then there's a very small um, kitchen here. We do prepare three meals a day if you choose to yes. have them. You so you've got the option of either eating in or either going across to the yes. main house. I think it's great that he likes the services. But having said that, you see, they haven't actually been to look at the dining room yet and they haven't seen all the old folks yomping with toothless gums on their custard. My husband's the man to talk to about it all. Yes. So we had a little look. I think he was very keen to talk to Mr Nixon. Yes, Does he sure. trust you with this? No, <laughs> never. I've allowed the cats and dogs and everything menial. <laughs> and I do menial very well. <laughs> you are sweet. <laughs> right, thank you. Thank you. Follow us then. Jennifer talks about her menial role, and it's obvious that she doesn't have much self-esteem at all. The problem really is that Nigel simply doesn't trust her to do a good job. And I'd like to know, as husband and wife, how this works, because they're both meant to be running this business together. Another poorly managed aspect of the property business is the use of space. Grand rooms are half converted and then abandoned, like the old kitchen at the back of the house. This is something without this horrible mezzanine that could be a marvellous public space. If this became the dining room, it would free up the central area for the charity balls and shift the retirement business to a more discreet part of the house. The Wally's other problem is waste. They're losing £20,000 a month in running costs, and Ruth wants to know why. Albury has 18 staff dotted all over the house, including a live-in seamstress, who rearranges the cushions. In the kitchen, the two full-time chefs feed more employees than residents. There's about 18 staff in total, uh, but with the residents, you know, on a daily basis, we're looking at feeding about 30 people. Right. I'm pretty happy that every yeah. day the residents are happy, I'm happy, and Nigel's happy. Yeah. And at the end of the day, that's, that's okay. what I need. So. And in the meantime, they're not making enough money. No, they're exactly. <laughs> no. This house costs £700,000 a year to run, 60000 of which goes on heating. With soaring energy costs, that figure is only going up. This is stonking amount of boilers. There's four here, two on the other side, absolutely enormous. Now, everywhere I walk around that house, it is boiling hot. He's heating spaces which are absolutely empty. He's heating places which just don't need the level of heat. There's a lot of service charges to cover that. The next morning, Ruth has arranged for a local high-end estate agent to visit Albury. Hello, Paul. Hi. Nice to meet you. I'm Ruth. Hello. Can we go through? 
She wants professional confirmation that just one properly finished flat will help sell the 16 unwanted apartments. So, Paul, this is um, one of the rooms that's currently being done up. Do you think people actually would prefer to walk into a space like this, completely undone, and say, yes, I'd like to have red walls and blue ceilings, or do you think they want to come and look at something that's done? I think the benefit of the show flat is absolute. I think not everyone is a qualified builder, and when people come to see things that we see around us today, they're probably thinking, oh my goodness, is that how it's built? You can only maximise value when you give the public something it actually wants to buy, something what the person actually wants to live in. And it's very important to understand the end user when you're designing the properties. Before delivering her rescue plan, Ruth heads to nearby London. Although they now make a loss, she thinks Jennifer's charity balls could make 20,000 a year in hire fees alone. High Society events organiser Dora Lowenstein holds her glamorous parties at Sotheby's. Can Dora help Jennifer turn a profit? So there we are with this woman in this enormous great house who currently does charitable events, makes losses on them. She's full of enthusiasm, very nice. What would you suggest she did? Well, I think she's, I, I'm, as I um, think that you've got to be very clear in your involvement in the charity, but be very, very clear also that she's running a venue and she must maybe pick a price that she's going to charge for that venue. It could be a charitable rate, but stick to it. And whatever she does for the charity must be a voluntary act and not affect the budget that they've set. Mm -hmm. So she's wearing one hat for one part of it and another for another. Yeah. And hopefully she'll be all right if she sticks to that. After three days at Albury, Ruth must tell the Wallies how to save their beloved home. How are you? Breathless, slightly breathless. <laughs> You're always breathless, Jennifer. You have dealt with the last four years with incredible incompetence, and I know that there's some justification for it, but I don't want there to be any justification for the future because the bank doesn't care. They mm -hmm. are savage people who all they want is a return. And more than a return, they want to see demonstrable progress that's underpinned by budgets, by an understanding of where your business is going. If they don't see that happening, you are going to be out on the streets along with every little old person who lives here. Ruth's solution to the bank's six-month deadline is to placate them with a grand plan and stop the scattergun approach to development. I would like you to get in a combination of chartered surveyor, property developer, local estate agent, who actually comes and looks at this entire building, surveys it and says, this is how it should be divided up. What I also have taken on board and which I thought right from the start myself is that you must have a show flat. They can't imagine the dream. You've got to give them the dream. The only way to pay back the debt is to sell apartments. But Albury is known locally as an old folks home. Moving the retirees' dining room should help with the rebranding. OK, what do you do with the residents? I've earmarked a space where I think would make a wonderful little restaurant for them, and that's possibly the old kitchen. But as well as their property debt, Nigel and Jennifer are losing a quarter of a million a year just running Aubrey. They haven't applied basic business practices. I was horrified when Wayne, your chef, said to me that he was given a budget per head, but he never has had to do a margin sheet. It's unheard of. That's our fault for not making him do it, then. OK. Well, so if we've got a history of you being indulgent with people, which says a lot for your nice natures, but <laughs> absolutely fuck all for your commercial acumen. <laughs> right, yes. Then you've got endless stuff, which I would really question the validity of keeping on. The needlework, the bits of upholstery, the bloody cushions. They are not making you a penny. They are actually costing you money. You know, it's like you're their aunts and uncles. Yes, and social actually, services. Yeah. We did say that the other, well, you said it the other week, didn't you? We said we've become social services. Ruth wants to turn the Wally's good nature into business sense. They're hosting a charity ball in three months, and she'll return to see if they can run it without losing money. At the end of the day, what I see are two very charitable people 
who have been looking after a great raft of people, very sweetly and very kindly, but who've now become paupers themselves, the and process. actually a yeah. need of huge charitable <laughs> endeavour. <laughs> you know, I mean, you are the ones who need the help, not the people you're helping. <laughs> six weeks since Ruth's visit, and Nigel has been busy converting the old kitchen into a new dining room for the retirees. Well, Ruth suggested that actually we ought to move the, the, the dining, change the dining room image, basically, and move them so they weren't so much in your face for people looking around. Um, well, since Ruth was here, um, yes, I, I've never seen my husband move so quickly and, and so efficiently for anybody in his life. Basically, we've said yes to everything because we don't want to be hit around the face with the, with the rubber pipe. Nigel has also taken Ruth's advice to engage architects. The only one we do have a problem with is this small apartment behind here. Acting on Ruth's suggestion, Nigel is also creating a grand plan to convince the bank he knows what he's doing. The architects have advised him to convert his 33 small flats into 20 large apartments to appeal to those younger buyers. The idea is to have this as a, as a sitting room for that apartment there. As Nigel takes charge of the property development, Jennifer holds the fort on reception. But there are still no plans for a show flat. for three months and I'm going to be so interested to see how Nigel and Jennifer are getting on. I know they're doing one thing and that's a charity ball in aid of the cheetah and if it's like any of the other things that Jennifer gets up to it will make a huge loss. Something they absolutely can't afford to do. I mean they're sitting on debts of over four million pounds and if I was in Nigel's shoes I would be shitting myself. Tonight's charity ball is crucial to see if the Wallies can turn a much needed profit from all but first, Nigel shows Ruth his progress with the newly relocated dining room. Ah, oh, fantastic. Once we've finished eventually doing all the meals, then it will go back into being a, an apartment. You mean when these people have gone? Have, have moved on eventually, yes. So how are we doing in that sense? Well, we have, we have a, bless her, we have a, a 96 year old who's at that table. Uh, she's 90, she's 94. They're both over 90 there. Uh, another couple there who are, are pushing 90. There's a 90 year old behind you there. There's a, she only comes for lunch, bless her, but she's 96, but she still does the garden. Then the natural course of events, you know, they, they know they're going to be moving on uh, sooner than you mean later. to heaven? Well, no, I'm moving, um, hopefully not just like that, but hopefully, you know, they might have to go to a nursing home. So I think most of them would rather wish that they just happened. Mm. <laughs> Ruth's idea for a grand plan has paid off. The bank has bought into it and extended Nigel's six-month deadline. But he still needs to repay the four million. Ruth's unhappy that nothing's been sold and there's no show flat. Not only I, but your uh, existing estate agents felt very strongly that a show flat was an essential part of marketing here. Well, the trouble is, of course, we haven't got one that I can do as a show flat. I mean, you're so kind of laid back. <laughs> may, may I say even sort of slightly complacent about it? Like, it's all going to be all right. And I don't know why you think it's all going to be all right. How do you feel about it? Um, very concerned. Very concerned. I think I'm probably more like you about it. Now, I'm very anxious that we get the thing underway. The thing about Jennifer is I think she loves me being here because I can crack a whip in a way that she can't and he has to listen to me. I think he wants to shout at me, but he's too polite to do so. He probably goes and shouts at her instead. But actually, I'm putting him on the spot and she loves it. I said that seems a bit laid back, but, you know, I try and, try and be calm. I mean, it's no good jumping up and down and rushing around in circles. You have to think about it carefully and 
and move these things ahead. We are working very hard. I mean, the proverbial duck swimming like mad and a bit looking serene on the top. That's the impression I try to try to give. So, <laughs> probably she said I'm more like a goose, I should think, probably, than a, than a duck or a swan, but anyway. With two hours until the charity ball, have the Wallies listened to Ruth? Or are they looking at another big loss? They weren't bothered to what she you spent? No. Hang the cost. Do what you want, spend like you want, eat what you want. Who gives a shit? It's the evening of the charity ball in aid of cheetahs at Albury Park Mansion, the Surrey country house owned by Nigel and Jennifer Wally. The Wallies are four million pounds in debt and can't afford to lose any more money. Businesswoman Ruth Watson needs proof they've changed their wasteful habits and properly budgeted for tonight's event. You're dressing all the plates. Hi, I won't because oh, yeah. no, you probably need your hands. So this is a salmon roulade you're kicking yeah, out here. Yeah, um, salmon yes. roulade with a little hairdresser. What was your budget for this? Well, we aimed for about £25 a head. Right, your, your costs were going to no, be 25 no, no, Sorry, sorry. Um, cost would be about 15 maybe £15 a head plus. Right. It's quite, you know, it's an expensive meal. Yeah. I wouldn't have thought it would be quite as much as 15 pounds. Yeah, maybe not 15, then. Yeah. But, I mean, were you not asked to restrict it to a certain amount? They, they weren't bothered to what you yes, spent? Yes, no. To me, no. Yeah. Hang the cost. Yeah, basically. Okay. I think at the end of the day they wanted to impress. Not only is there no budget for this dinner, which they're <laughs> giving away to everyone, um, but, you know, he speculates that the cost of food is 25 pounds. No way. Then he goes down to 15 pounds. It's probably more like eight. Well, it certainly shouldn't be any more. But the fact is that nobody seems to care about money in this place. It's like it's just footloose and fancy free. Do what you want, spend like you want, eat what you want. Who gives a shit? I think it's ridiculous. So whose decision was it to put the food down first and uh, before the people arrived in their places? OK. Is that because he just wants space in the kitchen? Um, well, no, it makes it nicer for the resident, um, the people that are coming. Otherwise Why? Because it's easier for us to find out where the vegetarians are straight away. Sorry, I don't get you. Well, if they're all sitting down, um, it finds it harder to find where the vegetarians are. So how do you find out where the vegetarians are now? Uh, name tags. Right. Where are the name tags? Well, they've gone now. They were here. <laughs> so how are the people going to find where they're sitting when they come in? I'm not too sure. Champagne through there to start off with. Champagne through there. There's uh, champagne just through there. Albury is just beginning to fill up. But there are already signs of poor planning and extravagant waste, such as free champagne for everyone. They kissed one man already tonight. Had so, you? Uh, Only one man? Only one man, thank God. I'm oh, getting a bit worried. <laughs> I'm losing my touch. Bit of a ladies' man, Nigel. I think he likes the ladies. Champagne and lovely women that way, OK? <laughs> Did you get to anybody to help sponsor the champagne? You know, like a supplier. No. <laughs> the catering budget is a write-off, but there's worse to come, as Ruth discovers on meeting Laurie Marker of the Cheetah Foundation. So if Jennifer and Nigel are sort of giving you the place and the food and the wine, etc., etc., I mean, can they cover their costs? Are you expecting them to do that? They have offered those costs as well as a gift to the Cheetah really? Conservation Fund. Okay, it's amazing. very generous. <laughs> generous. It's amazing. They, they, are, they are not, in, from, to my mind, in a position to be quite so generous as they're being. So, I mean, you wouldn't have minded paying the costs, the overheads of this, and just taken all the extra. Uh, profit. Well, of course, but it was whatever they have decided to come up okay, with. So all right. Sam. I just want them to be able to afford to be so generous and kind and thoughtful. If we could move, if we could move through, that would be great. Financially, this is a disaster. Ruth now knows the charity balls will never be a revenue source for the Wallies. There's no doubt there's a lot of goodwill around tonight, especially for cheetahs. I'm not sure it's going to do Jennifer and Nigel much good. But the fact of the matter is that this event has not been run with great competence. There's been no budgets and there are so many deficiencies in the service I can't even begin. So the question is, if they're not very good at events, what are they good at?
The next morning, Nigel is out. Ruth takes the opportunity to speak to Jennifer alone, to see if she understands the gravity of their situation. It's a notoriously difficult situation, husbands and wives working together. And you have suggested in the past that you only do the menial things. I mean, is that because you choose to, or do you think Nigel doesn't trust you to do any more? I mean, how, how do you divvy out the... Divvy out. You know? um, I think I fill in. Um, I had my own business, and again, you know, trusted people, which is a ridiculous thing to do in today's world. Um, so that failed. Um, and Nigel sort of rescued me, really. Mm. And but so, rescued in what way? By well, marrying you or yes, by... Yes. Right. Yes. <laughs> okay. It was a wonderful rescue not, job. <laughs> not by putting money into your business. No, no, no. 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 He okay. rescued me, uh, which was a wonderful rescue. Yeah. And um, so I've always wanted to, to please him and to help him. So how would you feel if um, things went horribly wrong and you didn't get the apartments done soon enough and sold soon enough to satisfy the bank? and they made a forced sale. I'm, I'd be living in a cardboard box with him. <laughs> I, I can't think now and I can't go there. What about the show flat? The show flat, fine. I will do you a show flat if you want a show but flat. But Nigel doesn't want a show flat. Um, I'm sure he won't resist if I ask him for a show flat. I'm sure we can put a show flat together for yeah. you. Yes. You keep saying for me. I don't want it for me. I want but it for fine. you. <laughs> I will accept that you're right <laughs> again and we'll make a show flat. I'll, I'll talk to him about a show flat when he gets back. Ruth wants to see a show flat and an open day to launch it in two months' time and wants it done on a strict budget. But the retirement business is still losing 20,000 a month and Ruth wants Jennifer to take control. I think that the two things that absolutely need to happen are one, to control the costs that exist right now with the setup you have right now. And that's obviously to do with the staff you employ, the services you provide, particularly the food, but whether it's the, the lighting, heating, all those kind of aspects of it. And that is very, very easy to do. And that's, the, that's my problem about why I slightly doubt Nigel's ability to pull this off, is because the bit he can control he hasn't been controlling. Right. So it may be that you are going to have to control the bit that you can control and let him carry on with the development bit. And you make the bit that's here and now work. Right. Because that would at least give you positive cash flow as opposed to a negative one that you have now. Mm. I think you're absolutely right. Mm. Is there anything you want to say to me? Because I... I... Do not do that. No? I don't want to make you cry. While I completely understand Jennifer's loyalty to Nigel, um, he is her husband after all, it's really distressing because she obviously knows things are wrong and the fact is that she's relatively powerless to do anything about it. As a woman, I sometimes think we haven't come a long way, baby. It's July and Ruth's pep talk has done the job. Jennifer has persuaded Nigel to create a show flat but there's just 10 days left until the open day. Nigel's very worried about it, uh, just being ready, because, you know, Ruth sort of um, has her piece of rubber hose for him. <laughs> well, this is going to be the drawing room of our show apartment. Uh, as you know, we've only got a short time to do it, uh, and blind panic is, is setting in. We have a, a false door over here, because we don't have the permission yet from the listed building. The plan is to knock through this wall and create a grand ground floor show flat from three small apartments originally set up for the elderly. The main entrance to the apartment will be down this passageway here. Again, the whole passageway is going to be done up, but not, for the, not in time for the show apartment. And this will be the main entrance. We've put a doorway in here, uh, which as you can see is a long way to go. Architrave to go round, painting to be done. Uh, and come into the the hallway here and here 
is the back end of the door you saw in the other room, which will come through here. Uh, and as you can see, there's uh, quite a bit of work to be done in there. We found these rather elegant uh, lights in the, in, the, in the cellar. So we'll put those on the wall. We haven't time to, to fit them properly, but we'll put them on the wall with bulbs in and they'll look rather wonderful. Jennifer has been saying, because we're trying to get away from this concept of a, of a house for the, for the elderly, uh, and that went in because this was originally designed for someone who was uh, elderly coming in. So she's been saying, oh, we must take out everything. We can't have a seat in the, in the shower, but uh, I think might well I'd love a seat in the shower, but maybe I'm getting old. The curtains, as you can see, are just wonderful. And these are just a beautiful, beautiful silk. Um, and we're going to make those with a sort of Georgian stringing. So they meet in the middle and are pulled back high. They enhance the Georgian windows. And they'll drop well on the floor and puddle onto the floor. Look very, very elegant. Despite Mr Brown, and despite the credit crunch, and despite the Chancellor, and despite all the gloom and doom that's in the papers, um, we're full of hope. Ruth is back at Albury for her final visit. Tomorrow is the open day, and the Wallies have brought in a specialist estate agent to present the apartments. Hello. Hi there. Hi, you're Tim. I am. Hello, how do you do? Good to meet you. You're putting Good up the you. signs? Yes, yeah, an updated banner. Yeah? Um, yeah, I'm readiness for the open day. So, so what are we doing? We're changing from some residential old people's home to to uh, a modern country property suitable for a bolt hole or for somebody looking for an investment. The, the problem is a lot of people in the area know it as a retirement home yeah. and that's what we're trying to change. So yeah. new banners, updated um, graphics. And you, have you seen anything that they've done up there? I have, yes. yes. I have to say, I am impressed. Am Very I going to be impressed? Yeah? You will be. Well, I look forward to seeing you later on. All right, okay, <laughs> Leave goodbye. you to your drill work. <laughs> Aubrey now has a show flat to complement its new image. It features a drawing room, two bedrooms, two bathrooms, an as yet unfinished kitchen, and a sitting room in what was the old dairy. Despite the transformation, the Wallies are nervous about Ruth's return. Nigel said this morning that it, when, with the advent of Ruth, he was going to wire the cattle grid. <laughs> No, no, it'll be, it'll, it'll be fine. I'm sure she'll be, um, yeah, she'll be more gentle on me this week. <laughs> Please, God. <laughs> oh, they've changed the boards for a woolly version of Brighton Beach. <laughs> Hello. Aha, there Hello. you are. Oh, and look at my dear. Our sofas have just arrived. Mm -hmm. Just arrived. Very good. Aren't they wonderful? So this is part of the new show flat. This is the main part. Well, yes, I've the, the, the main drawing. part. Yes, the drawing. Well, I have to say, I think you've done the most amazing job. Thank you. Thank you. I really oh, do. Wonderful. Because I tell you what, it's very neutral, but that's very clever. Yes. Because what you don't want is to frighten the horses. And it looks immensely elegant, and it suits the room. And how much better to show somebody this than one of those cruddy half-done rooms with a bit of old bathroom yes. hanging around and a not yes. quite completed Absolutely. kitchen and yes. bare walls and yes, 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 yes. I mean this is this is selling Aubrey. Yes, it is wonderful. Well isn't done it? you. Thank you. Cost? Well there is more. Table cost me ten pounds, so you stripped it and, and, and painted it yes. and antiqued it. The only new things are the sofas. Yeah. The mirror we moved out of the reception area. Yes. And the fireplace you put in, didn't you? That we put wasn't the fireplace there. in. Yeah, we found, that looks yes. very expensive. Uh, well, that was half a low budget fireplace. So right. we did terribly well on it. So half of 20,000? No, no, half, <laughs> not sure to half of five. Okay, not sure to half okay. of five. But, but it that stays, of course. Of course, and it will sell the house. Right. So it was lovely to have a good oh. one. Jennifer has changed her ways and brought the show fat in on budget. Nigel! Hello! Ah, hello. hello! How are you? How are you? How are you? I'm well. Yeah. You? I have just been admiring your wife's magnificent work. It's lovely. She's done a wonderful job, hasn't she? she? Really I hope has. you think so. I do think so. Yeah. Well, let's hope we get a sale from it. But can I see the rest of it? Because I just yes, walked past the building. Yes, absolutely. Yes, of course. Well, this is the master bedroom. Now, when we 
saw this earlier with Mr. Nixon, I think his name was. Mm, the yes, indeed. That came That's right, that yeah, time. Yeah. Now, this was, it was just this part that was the flat, wasn't it? With the bit down there. With the bit down the end. That's yeah, right. so yes, it's actually gained a very nice okay. lobby and that fantastic room. We've actually joined three apartments together. The to huge make kitchen. This mm, so. He might have had it if might it had been like this. Yeah. I mean, the great thing about this is that having a show flat. You know, you're just giving people an idea of how life could Absolutely. be here. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't disagree and with that at all. Jennifer's going to put her finishing touches in. Oh, yeah, there's later quite a bit more to do for tomorrow yet, yeah. so we're going to be at it till midnight. But even working late, Nigel's builders won't have time to fit the kitchen. Luckily, Ruth has a bright idea. You could turn this on its head and say, you know, the fact is that anyone putting in a bid for this, we can do the kitchen any way you like. So you could turn a plus, um, a minus into a plus. I mean, I think, you know, the things you've really hit on the head is, is doing a show flat at all, increasing the space. All I want to see, and I'm not going to keep nagging about it, but I will, is reduction on costs as well. That would be No, terrific. they are going in the right direction. Oh, yeah, okay. they're definitely going in the right direction. And so that's good. But more pats than oh, smacks. Oh, good. Oh, that makes a change. <laughs> the show flat is in place. But is it enough to shake off Albury's old image and save Nigel and Jennifer's dream home? My budget was this big. And as always, my husband's was this big. I think they've missed a trick here. I thought it was a nursing home, to be honest. And I thought it might be a bit kind of crabby. <laughs> It's the morning of the open day at Albury Park Mansion in Surrey. Nigel and Jennifer Wally are putting the final touches to the show flat they hope will be the turning point in paying off their four million pound debt. Businesswoman Ruth Watson is on her way to see if her rescue plan for Albury will work. This is my final visit to Albury and of course it coincides with the open day. And what I really hope and pray is that they have a stream of willing punters who are desperate to purchase an apartment at Albury or even rent one. Because what Jennifer and Nigel really need is some cash flow and some money back in the coffers to offset that huge bank loan that they've got. Fingers crossed. Hello, morning. Hello. How, How are you? Lovely to see you. How are you? We're well. Are we're you really are you prepared? <laughs> uh, we hope so. It yeah. depends what you say to us. <laughs> but we hope so, yes. We've done really It's well, all looking good. It's all looking good, we yeah. think. Yes. And what about the old folks? Have you pensioned them well, off somewhere? Well, we've tried um, to suggest that, this, that, 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 that there are too many people here for them and they'll be trampled, but it's not necessarily working. Hi, good morning. Nigel Wally, how do you do? <laughs> it's, the, it's the quality I'm looking for. So, basically, this would be your front door, right. and this would be your hallway. The two-bedroom, two-reception show flat is also available for sale at £900,000. I just knew it as retirement apartments. I had no idea that there was any possibility of, of it being sold as, as individual property. I it was a nursing home, to be honest, and I thought it might be a bit kind of... Happy. Tim and his team of agents are also showing potential purchasers other unrenovated apartments. Anyway, let me take anyway, you. Thank you very much, lovely. But only once they've seen the show flat and have the crucial knowledge of what the apartments will look like when finished. It's quite difficult to envisage the grand plan as such without having something like that to sort of bring you back into, into focus, so yeah. to speak. And it's important to see that first because then that is in your mind as you go around. So got more people, got more people coming? Yes. Hi, I'm Nigel Wally. Hello. So my budget was this big, and as always, my husband's was this big. But I did it. I did it. Oh, very good. <laughs> very good. So it's lunch hour now, and a lot of people have come through to have champagne and some very nice-looking nibbles and smoked salmon sandwiches and things. My only question mark is, why are they putting this spread on here? It's the inner core of the house, the least attractive part of Albury. They could have actually been doing it in one of the fine drawing rooms or out on the terrace even. I think they've missed a trick here. Despite Ruth's reservations, the open day has gone well. It's, it's something that we, we're, we're definitely going to consider, isn't it? It's going to demand a big conversation between us. <laughs> yeah, I think I know which one I am. <laughs> <laughs>
and with the help of the show flat, prospective buyers can visualise the grand plan for all 20 luxury apartments. They're different, they're unique, they're interesting, they've got a lot of history, they tell a story, people then they have visitors, they've got lots to tell them about and show them around and, you know, they don't need to get in a car and drive to go for a country walk. They can literally hop out into the garden and they've got acres of land to walk around and, and sort of show off, really. <laughs> So that seemed to be like a very busy morning and all enjoying their champagne. How do you think it um, went? It was a very good day. Very, very well worthwhile doing. We've probably got two people who are very serious about this one. Okay. We have a lady who is very interested in the gatehouse, wants to come and see it when it's finished. And we've got two people who are very interested in the muse apartments from rental perspectives. This property has been, for a better word, blighted by local knowledge, local opinion as to what it was used for. Um, today we've brought people in who think it's a retirement home. It isn't. Mm -hmm. And hopefully from there they'll go and spread the word. Mm. And the show flat really seemed to perform very well, didn't it? Yes, you, you're absolutely right. It's what we needed here. We really needed it for the, for the marketing. And it's, um, everybody's loved it, mm. um, whether they want this size or not. It's given the, 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 the quality of the place, I yeah. think, has shone It's through. an indicator, isn't it? Yes, yeah. absolutely, what we can do. The show flat has sold Albury to a new market. The Wallies still need to reduce their running costs, but now they have a clear plan to pull themselves out of their financial nightmare. When I first came here, um, I found what I thought was a very fragmented business. What I think has been the greatest achievement is that you no longer are tinkering with a number of different things. You've got one clear goal, and that is to sell the apartments here. And I didn't get that feeling before. However, Ruth has one last observation to make before she goes. I do feel that you treated Jennifer a little bit as a very pretty decoration, but rather than a very useful member of the team. And I think Jennifer has actually shown that, you know, she is an incredible good asset to Aubrey because she's actually shown people what Aubrey can look like. No, absolutely. I mean, this is what we were sort of aiming to do, to be honest, when we had the money and everything else. I mean, it is a, it is a slow process. But I, I think also that with Ruth, the advent of Ruth, we, has brought such hope and such possibilities. And so that's inspired me on, on my own, that we really can accomplish this and achieve it. Today has been incredibly encouraging. And as long as you continue on this trail, and I'm sure you will, then I see no reason at all why Aubrey shouldn't be a huge success story. And the idea of you living here without any of the worries that mm. you've had in the past, I mean, you know, it can only be a marvellous picture. Yes, it will Absolutely. be wonderful, Ruth. Absolutely wonderful, thank you.